So as we start out, we're going to work through um, God's past designs. Um, and I, I was late getting them there. There is some notes back there if you want one. Uh, God's present bestowments and God's future fruition and what he'll bring to come and bring to be. So as we think about that, um, I want to start out in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to me, as I see that, blessed be the God and Father. Praise to Him, recognizing who He is and, and how this came to be, um, and verbalizing that. And then He goes on to say, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And I key in on that word, every. It's not some of it. It's not part of it. It's all of it that He has blessed us with. And as we think about that, what, what that becomes, and I'll finish up with some thoughts on what it is, just those blessings of we're no longer dead. First of all, we're now alive. We're a new creation in Him. And because of that, we understand the implications of that and an eternity with Him, already a part of his, of his holy kingdom. Verse 4 goes on to say, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. I think of that. He thought of me before the foundation of the world. He thought of you before the foundation of the world, in His plan. As I think about eternity, um, I have to be careful that I don't only think eternity forward, because eternity is both directions. Eternity past and eternity future. And God has always been there, and He's always in both. And in that, He thinks of us, His, His children, he thought of us before it ever began, time as we know it. So as we go on, and we, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. To think about His love. And again, this is simplistic if we're not careful. So much that He died for us while we were yet His enemies. And we can each of us think about the people in the world um, I hope not personally, but to think about what an enemy is and the ability to love our enemies in spite of how they would harm us and seek to do us harm. And it comes from this inheritance that we have because of how he produces that in us. And it's through his love that we can know that. I want us to look at 1 Peter. 1 Peter, verse 20. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, that being the current times that we now live in, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your souls by obeying the truth through the Spirit and sincere love, of the brethren love one another fervently and with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Born again, born from above, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Forever. I've yet to figure out how to explain forever. I, I know it has a beginning, with no end. That's about as close as I can come to describing forever. But to know again that we've been born again. And it's forever. It is forever. Let's drop back to Ephesians. Uh, let's look at verse 5. Verse 5. Having predestined us to the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself. I made me a note here um, so I wouldn't forget to share this. Um, 2013, we were still living in Kansas, but we had come home for Easter. And we'd come here for service. Um, 
And Jay was still small enough that he was still in a car seat. That's one thing we now celebrate, no more car seats. Uh, our Lilliston turned 13 today. So anyway, um, in saying that, as I, as I set him in the car seat, and I just voiced this to him, I said, Jaden, I'm so glad you're my son. And he looked at me, and he said, and I'm so glad that you're my dad and that you chose me. Adoption and what that is. God chose us, and he did it before the foundation of the world. If that can't be encouraging to us, I don't know what can. So as we go on and we think about what that verse says, Adoption as sons and daughters by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will. It pleased God to adopt us. I don't know if anybody here ever does. Uh, they get to consider and you know that they've got to do this or do that or do other things to be pleasing to God. But according to this, it was his good pleasure to adopt me in the rottenness of who I was, in the moment of all of who I was. It was his good pleasure of his will. We should find great confidence in that. His love for us is not based on what we do or don't do. It's not dependent upon that. God chose to love us, and it's the pleasure of his will. It's an incredible thing to think about. And we can recognize the fullness of that inheritance that we have coming out of His good pleasure. Verse 6 says, To the praise of His glory, to the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. Beloved being Jesus Christ. And we are accepted, and again, in the fullness of that inheritance. Just remember what he said in verse 3. Every spiritual blessing. Every single one of them. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him, all things were created that are in heaven and, on, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones or dominion or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. He goes before us as he adopts us. Let's look back at verse 7. And we're going to go with this thought, God's present bestowments. What is He presently bestowing upon us? Verse 7, In Him we have redemption through His blood. We have life at His expense. As He walked on this earth, He came and He died and He suffered. Because I want us to always remember, uh, we, we think of the values that even we personally try to impart upon our family. But God as part of his character, is also a just God. And he did require payment for sin. But he's also a loving God. And in that, through his justness, it required a sacrifice. But he did that for us out of his love, that we could be his adopted children. His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. You know, in this world and I had even saw that they were speaking about the queen and all the properties that were personally hers and that will be left to her heirs. And we think about all those things and, and the value of them. Um, 
I've come to a full conclusion that, and I'm saying this, this is just my opinion. I've come to full conclusion there's nothing on the face of this earth that belongs to me. The reason I can, I say that out of my opinion, I fully recognize when I pass from this earth, all of that's still here. That's not these riches we're talking about. We're talking about the riches of God's grace that He's departed upon us. And again, it's not dependent upon our works. You know, I, I go in the world and as I, I share the Gospel, I consistently hear this. Why is it that you could get to heaven? And, and why would God say, come into my heaven? Well, because I'm a good person. Because I, I treat my family well. Because I go to church all the time because I give lots of money to the poor, because I help feed people. That's not what grace is. Grace is in spite of what we do or don't do. And it's from God. It's His love, and it's the riches of that that He imparts upon us as His children. And it's an incredible, incredible spiritual gift. It's a spiritual blessing. So as we move on to verse 8, uh, which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Again, I've already spoke about the, the justice law carried out, but in His mercy, reconciling us to Himself. His plan, that word prudence, His plan as He carried it out. And in all of God's wisdom, and we're plainly told uh, the beginning of man's wisdom is foolishness to God. We can't even begin to, to fathom that, that uh, rich wisdom that's there in the, that verse. Verse 9, having made known to us the mystery of His will. The mystery of His will. So if we know it, is it any longer a mystery? And my answer would be no. It's only a mystery to those that have not discovered Him. And this is what I'll say. I don't at all proclaim to know all there is about God and about His truths and about all that He has. But I can plainly say this, that mystery, the acceptance that He gives us as we've heard and, and come to know Him through the proclamation of the Gospel. And we've already touched on this. Many have never heard the truth of His grace. And again, they believe it's in the works that they do. It's of self. And then the relationship that we can have uh, through His adoption as children. Having made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself. And we see again His, His good pleasure. We see the gospel on display. And to recognize it's not of us or our ways. It's completely of Him as He chose to adopt us. And I am so glad He chose us. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, I would say this, for a time such as now, for a time such as now, we are saved, we are adopted for a time such as now. God is not surprised by any single event that's happening on the face of this planet right now. He's not. And He's called us to be a part of His kingdom to be a part of all He's doing. And we can fully stand on the fact that He knows what's going on and He's placed us in this moment in time. I catch myself sometimes thinking about as we have opportunity to be around the, the legal refugees, knowing that some of them, their stories, and it's heartbreaking. And I catch myself going away from that moment thinking this thought. Why is that? not me because that's not God's plan or his will for my life that's why that's not me I have to focus on what his will is for my life and I challenge you with that focus on his will for your life and his plan for your life and as we do that he says that he must gather he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. This is what I know. When the time was right, he sent Jesus Christ. It's 
die. And when Christ died on that cross and he rose again, death, hell, and the grave were forever conquered. It is finished, victoriously finished. And that's yet another of those spiritual blessings that we have. For us, eternity is finished if we know him. Verse 11 tells us, in him we also and in him also we have obtained an inheritance. True riches, the inheritance of heaven. Um, we've already talked about this. All that's on this earth, it's merely temporary. It's a blessing as we go about, and yes, we have needs in this body, food, clothing, and shelter. And then we get many things beyond that, the opportunity to enjoy and to do and to experience. You know, as part of my own inheritance, um, last Friday we, we were with the international students, and one of the questions they posed, and they just had us sitting as groups, but what have your parents imparted to you that's important, uh, a value or a thought that's helped you in life? And, you know, I considered it, and I, I'm so thankful for my mother, but one of the things she taught us growing up is to be open-minded to always be willing to experience. Whether it be food or an activity or, or a place, but to be open. And I want to say this, I'm so thankful for that because in my own life, were I not open-minded, I would still be a lost person because I'm not the person that was in church and came to know Christ at a young age. I was 37 years old, but it was out of that openness openness that I believe that God was able to work in my life and convince me of some things. And I'm so thankful for that as he drew me to himself. And that's just one of the glorious things that, that he gives us as people is the, the values and the, and the family that he gives us. And we can again, and it says, according to his purpose, his good pleasure and purpose. What an incredible thing. The purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. We've seen twice already his will. It's his will that, that, that his creation, it, mankind, come to know him. He plainly tells us he died for all the world. Not just some, not just part, but all. And again, as he leaves us, the, the act of choosing that. One of the ways I've learned to kind of explain free will um, I'm convinced of this. God is truly able, if he chose, to cause us all to come to him. But he gives us free will because you cannot make another human being love. Love is a choice, just as he chose to love. Love is a choice, and therefore, I believe that's part of the purpose of the free will so that we can freely love God and freely love others around us. Verse 12 tells us, again, that, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. And I'm going to say that verse and what I'm seeing in it points to the fact that you know, the, the believers that came before, being Paul and those before him up to this point. But also to consider this, we, that's a, that's a plural inclusive word to the praise of his glory. I have to really think about these things uh, because again, and, and maybe this will speak to somebody, but this plainly tells us that we are praised to God's glory. I'm not sure we always act like that. I know I don't, but I want to encourage us. We should act like who he says we are and how he views us. And it's to the praise of God's glory. Let's look at Romans um, verse 8. Forgive me. Chapter 8. We're going to look at verses 12 through 17. 12 through 17. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. 
For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your body, you will live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. It's incredible to me to, to reflect the Creator of everything we know, everything we see, feel, touch, and those things that we can't even comprehend. Father. Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. If you want to know if you're saved, this plainly says the Spirit gives witness to your spirit that you're saved. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. Did you listen to that? If indeed we suffer with Him. You know, before I became a believer, I had different people approach me about what it was to be a believer. And they would voice to me, if you'll just accept Christ, your life will become easier. Um, that's not truth. He plainly tells us that we will suffer in this life. The incredible thing about it, he tells us as we do, he is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. We can stand firm upon that. Our sufferings are the same as the world around us. This world it was cursed at the garden because of that sin entered in. And out of that sin, lots of bad things go wrong. But that does not mean that he won't be with us. And we may also be glorified together. I know Mike voices this. But I, I've shared this with Cindy. It would delight me, absolutely delight me, to be sharing with somebody when the Lord called me out of here. And at their hand, for somebody to decide they were going to take me out because I was praising my God, I want to go out that way. I truly do. Let's look at um, verse 14, or 13 back in Ephesians. Verse 13 back in Ephesians. Y'all are probably there much faster than me tonight. 13. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom, you have all, in whom also having believed. I think about what it is to believe and, and to come to trust. It says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's how we come to trust Him and to, to know Him. It says, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And it was... This sealed, as, as we think about what that implies, and, and maybe even to those it was written to, um, when they would seal up documents, they would take wax and put, roll them up and then put wax there. And then a king would have a signet ring. In other words, like a stamp. We would call it a stamp in today's time. But to stamp that, that becomes a seal that, that cannot be broken, that is not to be broken. And, and to know that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 14 through 17. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You've heard me speak on these verses. A proclaimer. Instead of that word preacher, proclaimer. And how shall they proclaim, it says preach, unless they are sent, as it is written, 
How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That is how we acquire our faith. And again, the spiritual blessing of that. And Him giving us the ability to understand and comprehend that. Because it's through the Spirit that we have the ability to do so. Let's look at verse 14, back in Ephesians. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance? Does anybody ever get phone calls from those random calls? Uh, your, your car's warranty is about to run out. Um, I'm fully aware of that. Mine's an 03 model. <laughs> It's been out a long time. It's amazing to me to think about what a guarantee is. The wonderful thing in this, the Holy Spirit is eternal. And He is the guarantee of our inheritance. It'll never run out. Until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. A royal priesthood. God says it must be so. I believe it to be so. Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to finish with this. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. We're going to read through verse 35. Chapter 30, verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare His own Son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Not some things, all things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? who makes intercession for us. You know, growing up a lot of times, I was the big brother. Uh, and little brothers would come get me sometimes. You know, because somebody was picking on them. We can recognize Christ making intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. How incredible is that to even begin to think about. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want us to go away tonight recognizing He chose us. That's the way adoption works. He adopted us as His sons and His daughters. May we walk boldly in that as we go forth into this world. Here's my thought. I want everybody around me to know who my Heavenly Father is. Because I'm thankful for Him. And I, He is worthy of all proclamation. He's worthy of all praise and glory. And I want to be good at letting those around me know who I belong to. That I'm adopted. And that is my heritage in God. Thank you all so much.